Hello everyone, my name is Chris and in this video we're talking about subroutines in PyTeal. Subroutines are like PyTeal's equivalent to functions. They can be called multiple times within the contract, you can pass in arguments, and return a single value or no value at the end. Now creating a subroutine is fairly simple. All you need to do is add the decorator subroutine to a function and specify whether the subroutine returns a value or not within the parentheses. Since the AVM only supports int and byte, the return should be either teal type none, teal type un64, or teal type bytes. With ABI support coming into play with ARC4 standard, now there are more options to better route subroutines within the contract. If you want to define the subroutine for internal usage, nothing changes, you just use the subroutine decorator with the return value specified in the parentheses. These internal subroutines won't be exposed to the ABI, which is like a guide for the front end or other smart contracts to use when interacting with the smart contract. So what do you do if you want to define a subroutine for external usage? For example, like a method that the front end can call or other smart contracts can interact with. This is where you use the router.method decorator, where router is a variable that can change based on the name of the variable you use for your router. This should be familiar by now as I've used this decorator multiple times in my previous PyTeal videos. The router.method decorator is going to register the subroutine as an external method to the router, and the router is going to expose the subroutine to the ABI so that the front end knows that the external subroutine exists and knows how to call the subroutine. Now let's take a look at some code to see how subroutines are used in PyTeal. All right, here we have a smart contract called subroutine example. And here we have a router setup that defines what happened during creation. And we're assigning this router to the my router variable. Now coming down here, we have two internal subroutines. The first subroutine returns a teal type UN64 type. It's an add method that takes in two arguments, A and B, which are both UN64 type. And it adds those two values by doing A.get plus B.get. Again, remember you have to use the get method here because the AVM can only interpret UN64 and byte value. But here we're passing in an ABI UN64 type, which needs to get encoded into teal type UN64 type. And this get method is going to do that for you. And down here we have a subtract method, which is also an internal subroutine that returns teal type UN64 and is going to subtract A and B. Now remember, internal subroutines are not exposed to the ABI. So the front end won't know these methods exist. So we need an external method that will call these internal subroutines. Now coming down here, we have the call internal method, which is decorated by myrouter.method. Now remember, if it's decorated by the router.method decorator, then the method is an external method. Now this external method takes in three arguments. First argument is called action, and it takes in an ABI string value. And then it takes in A and B, which are both abi.un64 type. And to the right of the star, it's defining the type of output, and output will be an abi.un64 type. The call internal method is returning a sequence where we're doing some condition checking. Here, we're saying if the action value is the same as the add string in bytes, then set the output as whatever the result is from calling the add internal subroutine with argument A and B. So this is how you call an internal subroutine from an external method. It's the same as calling a Python function inside of a Python function. And then here we have else if, and we're checking if the action is the byte value of subtract, then we're going to set the output as whatever the return value is from calling subtract internal method with argument A and B. Now down here, I have the same code that is going to compile and write out the artifacts. So let's open up a terminal and run this file. Now that compiled the smart contract. And if you go to the folder, we have the artifacts folder created. And inside the artifacts folder, we have the three artifacts written out. Now let's deploy and interact with our subroutine example smart contract from Datflow. Head over to Datflow, configure your node to Sandbox by coming over here, clicking Sandbox and Save. Then connect your dev wallet. If you don't have a dev wallet, create it from this dev wallet tab over here. Head over to ABI Studio and import in your ABI. File, upload file, go to your subroutine folder, go into the artifacts folder, 
and then import in the contract.json file. Now, as you can see, the only method that is exposed to that flow is call internal method. And we don't see the add and subtract internal subroutines that we defined. That's because those two subroutines weren't exposed to the ABI and therefore is not accessible by the front end. Now to create it, click create app, click bear. And because this smart contract doesn't hold any states, I'm going to put all of these as zero. Upload your approval program. Upload your clear program. And then click create. There you go. Now our application is created. Now, if you expand the call internal method here, you can see some details about this method. You can see that the call internal method takes in three arguments where the action argument is a string value and A and B are UN64 type. And it's going to return a UN64 type. Now come over to execute. And first, let's try calling the add internal subroutine. So for action, I'm going to type add. And let's try adding three and four. And if I execute this, you can see that the method returned seven, which is correct. So when we click the execute button, it called the call internal external method, which called the add internal subroutine because I put add for the action. And then now let's test out the subtract internal subroutine. I'm going to type in subtract. And let's try subtracting 10 to 5. And if I click execute, it will return 5. And you can see that I called the same call internal method, but because I passed in subtract as the action argument, the call internal method was able to change its action and call the subtract internal subroutine. So this is how subroutines work with PyTeal. Today, we talked about PyTeal subroutines, which is PyTeal's equivalent to functions. We also talked about how you can define subroutines for internal and external purposes with the subroutine decorator and the router.method decorator. That's it for today.